Hi guys! This is Desiree of The Succulent Therapy. We are back again with another video. Today, we're going to talk about something interesting, which is the reason of the succulent's bright colors. There are three factors responsible for this one. As we know, we have the light, water, and of course, the temperature. But before all of that, let's start to understand why the succulents change their color or how do they do it. So, uh, let's start with the pigment first. Okay, so a lot of you might know the chlorophyll or the uh, green pigment of your plant. Uh, this is the pigment, as you know, that is responsible for converting the light into nutrients. Uh, for example, we have the sugar. Uh, the second one is the carotenoid. This is your pigment's red orange and yellow uh, these pigments are natural they naturally appears on plants or fruits when they ripen for example we have the lemons uh, they are naturally green but when they ripen uh, they will turn yellow so as with the bananas you can also see some of this pigment with carrot uh, orange like that that is for carotenoid and so moving on with anthocyanins that is mostly responsible for your succulents coloration so this is your pigments red um, pink purple and also blue um, this is mostly produced by some succulents as a form of protection to the weather that they are exposed to now Let's relate these pigments with the succulents. First, we have the chlorophyll. Um, some plants or some succulents are meant to be green. So this means that no matter how you stress them or how you expose them to light, they will always be green. For example, we have our green peperomia, pagoda, grenovia, and many others. Some green plants like uh, burrito, sedum clavatum pendens and others uh changes uh, changes their color to pastel however um this can never be covered by another color except from green okay so uh, as you know Plants cannot survive without chlorophyll. That is why some plants or, uh, for example, the moon cactus, which has the color of uh, bright uh, red, orange, yellow, like that, are mostly grafted with another, another plant in order for photosynthesis to take in. Okay? Uh, moon cactus is mostly grafted with blue boy, which is really great for grafting. We have also the dragon fruit that could really be. And so that is the reason why moon cactus is really controversial since it has been introduced to the market. Market. okay so we'll talk about that uh, later on so moving on with carotenoid as i said a while ago this is a natural color that appears when it ripens when the fruits ripens um with succulents however carotenoid appears when they are mostly cultivated in short um this appears on uh, variegated succulents. Most of the variegation of the uh, uh, that appears on the cultivated succulents are yellow or white. Like for example, we have our variegated jade, the variegated titubans, variegated marinade, variegated um, suyon, and others. And it's uh, there are many in the market um uh, when these succulents especially the variegated are stressed the variegation will be will then be covered uh, by anthocyanin so for example we have our sedum aurora right here when it is not stressed uh you can see the variegations white uh, mixed with light green but when they are stressed the white color you can see right here will turn pink 
and the uh, light green color will turn red uh, which makes it really lovely and it will uh, add some color into your collection if you have them so uh, uh, when it is uh, stressed it, it is really really beautiful so another example is the variegated kiwi we have the yellow variegation right here that will soon turn red when it is stressed okay so aside from variegated plants colors red blue purple pink appears on normal succulents like for example we have the uh, pink leaves the jelly bean that turns red the red ruby that is normally green it will turn red on the cold months we have the very higgins or the choco moonstone it will turn um something like uh, chocolatey they are naturally brown or green something like that we have also the marinade that will turn um, orange or something on the uh, peachy peachy uh, color we have our mendesay ellen that can turn red we have our debbie and uh, pearl von nanberg that is purple and some other plants okay so um some other plants however likes to cover their leaves with farina like we have our example right here we have the kante topsy-turvy and lawi and others uh, this is to protect themselves with the hot climate or the harsh climate that they are exposed to let's uh, look at some examples of these plants uh, some of these pigments on plants because most of these three factors which is what we have said a while ago what is that uh, the chlorophyll uh, carotenoid and anthocyanin can appear on one plant we have our example right here this is a variegated suyun this one the green pigment that you can see right here the darker color this is the chlorophyll the white one is the carotenoid and the ones that covers it that is the result of the cold weather as you know we are in the cold weather right now that is the anthocyanin okay so carotenoid and chlorophyll are not the reason of your succulent's color instead it is the anthocyanin so we have another example right here as I said a while ago, uh, the green color is the uh, chlorophyll. The variegation or the white or yellow color is the carotenoid. And the ones that makes it colorful is the anthocyanin. Normal succulents or the non-variegated succulents has two pigments on them. These are some of the examples. Some of these plants are completely covered with anthocyanins during the month of December to March because of the cold weather. These are some of the examples. We have our Super Boom, Cupid, Vera Higgins, or the Chuko Moonstone, and others. Okay, so that's with our pigment. Now that we understand the pigment responsible for succulent's color, let's talk about how to achieve those colors. So some people will say that just stress them and uh, they will be colorful, which is true, but how will you do it without harming your plant? Okay, so the first important factor is the light. So obviously, the strongest source of light is the sun. So, uh, mostly succulents need 3 to 4 um, hours a day in order for them not to etiolate. Uh, but, they mostly need 4 to 6 hours a day in order for them to be colorful. This will be difficult to achieve with the areas that um, experience uh, harsh sun. 
uh, it's uh, more challenging for them to grow succulents. And so, so, one of the technique that you can do in here so that your succulent will not burn is the acclimation. Okay, so this is when you gradually expose your plants and to the sun slowly until they are completely established. So, how will you do this? This, uh, for example, when you ordered your plant and you just planted them on a pot, and the first week place them on a bright shade, uh, so that you will give them time to produce roots. In the next week, you know that they have produced uh, some small roots already. You can expose them to the morning sand for about 2 to 3 hours. They could be good with that. And place them again in a bright shade when the uh, heat uh, is really harsh already. Okay, so in the next week, you can, um, you can increase the amount of time that you place them under the sun. Uh, do this for about two months in order for them to be acclimated. When you notice that there are some new leaves that appeared on the plant or in your succulents rosettes, uh, that's when you know that uh, uh, there are really activity that is happening down there. Uh, it has roots, it has produced uh, um, new leaves, so that's a good sign. So, uh, you are doing this in order for your plant to adopt your climate before exposing them to the harsh environment that will help them uh, pop the color that they are hiding, okay? So, that is with the sunlight or the light. So, the next factor, as we said a while ago, is the water. When you are water stressing your plant, be careful because some of the pests may appear on, on some plants. For example, the aphids because uh, they just like the dry surface. They like to dwell onto that. And so, uh, succulents can go along without water for months and then they will come back beautifully when you water them again. So, if you want your succulents to be more colorful, reduce the amount of water that you give them. For me, I make sure that I water them only when the soil is dry. So, how will you know or how will you know that the soil is dry? Just stick your finger in there and then uh, it will give you an answer if you will water or not or you could do the 10 days interval to make sure that you're giving time for your um for your succulents to breathe and to dry out before watering again and so the last a factor we have of course the temperature the ideal temperature for most succulents is somewhere around 70 degrees Fahrenheit in cold months of course uh, we have the months of December to March the temperature will drop up to 40 degrees Fahrenheit resulting to a color changing of your succulent so as I said here in Baguio uh, our temperature can drop up to 7 degrees Celsius in the months of December to uh, March. Uh, that is why our succulents tend to be more colorful on these months. Or some of the places in Binget, like for example, Atok, Mankayan, and Bogyas, uh, the normal temperature on the months or all year can be around 20 to 15 degrees celsius and uh, when they when they go to the months of december to march the uh, temperature can drop up to five degrees celsius and so here are some photos that uh, sir pg heights from atok had uh, captured we have the uh, water turned ice already this um is really the time that is mostly hard for the farmers because uh, they cannot predict it and some of the vegetables are uh, will die mostly 
so that is really hard for them and so that is the reason why the succulents from Atok, Mankayan, and Bogias are mostly colorful all throughout the year so that's with the temperature uh, so there are some succulents that are cold hardy like we have the sempervivums they're really good with that even if you plant them on ground really love the cold weather and they can survive it uh, and so that is uh, some of the three things or three factors that you can do in order to stress your succulents uh, again we have the temperature the water and the light okay so here are some of the uh, beautiful succulents when they are stressed that will really be great in your garden When stressing succulent, it is important to keep an eye on them in order for them to maintain their good health. Stressing may result to some casualties, but when it is done properly or right, not only that they will be uh, colorful, they will also add some interest in your garden uh, because of their beauty. Okay, so um that's it for today's video thank you so much for watching thank you for liking commenting and sharing my videos i really appreciate those ones and uh, if you like this video please do mind to click the subscribe button and click the notification bell to be updated to my upcoming videos uh, thank you so much guys for watching i hope you are doing well and have a great day bye bye